must fight together or the whole planet dies. Kara, your friends are in mortal peril. All living things in all realities are about to die. By taking action, can one transform doom into salvation? Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. DC just dropped a brand new trailer for Justice League Crisis on Infinite Earths Part 2. It's a three-part movie. We just got Part 1, so we'll break everything down. There are a bunch of brand new characters here, like we have Batman Beyond. Terry McGinnis is back. In everything that's happening with James Gunn's reboot of DC movies, it also extends to all the animated stuff too. So they're kind of using this Justice League Crisis on Infinite Earths saga to reboot all the animated stuff into the DCU. It's meant to be a bit of a reference to the way that they use the original Crisis on Infinite Earths in the comics to completely reboot DC's continuity, cleaning things up in the comics. Now they're just borrowing that concept, but for the movies. We also found out about a live-action Batman Beyond movie that they were developing before James Gunn's big reboot of all the movies. So I'll explain how that was supposed to go down too. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. I don't know when part 3 is coming out and they haven't listed a release date for part 2 here, but I'm assuming this is coming in the next couple months, maybe by the summer. I think the idea was for them to release all three parts of this movie this year on home video, and it's all home video releases. But if you have no idea what's going on, this is basically like the Tomorrowverse version of Justice League Crisis on Infinite Earths, but they rope in a lot of other universes and Easter eggs for the classic DC animated universe stuff too. Some of you probably picked up on this, but they actually brought back Matt Ryan's Constantine, voiced by a different actor. It's actually Nolan North voicing him in the movie, but it's meant to be the Constantine from the DC animated universe before they rebooted everything. There was a teaser at the end of Constantine House of Mystery movie where he sees something, but you don't know what it is. He was meant to be seeing the crisis wave and everything that's happening during Crisis on Infinite Earths here. And the Spectre explains that because during Justice League Apocalypse War, he sent the Flash back in time to cause another Flashpoint reboot the universe, his actions directly led to this crisis on Infinite Earths that's threatening the entire multiverse. So for those of you that were hoping that they would sort of rope in the DC animated movies and make that canon to what's happening in this crisis on Infinite Earths, that did happen. During the movie, The Flash seemingly doesn't remember the events of Justice League Apocalypse War, and the Spectre tells him that you also bear responsibility for what's happening now with the Crisis Wave. He's basically referencing the end of Justice League Apocalypse War in The Flash's new version of Flashpoint that he causes at the end of that. So in the movie, he takes the role that Pariah had in the original Crisis comics, sort of serving as this Herald of Doom that's coming, but they sort of change the plot and do it more from The Flash's perspective. He's meant to be this main point of view character who's skipping backwards and forwards inside his own timeline without really understanding why. They kind of tease that later at the end of the movie. There are a couple other changes to the way the story goes down, like there's this whole Amazo subplot. They give him a new origin story, and the Flash later winds up using that version of Amazo to help construct the multiverse towers to stop the crisis wave or prevent it from destroying a couple of the Earths. Once the Monitor brings everyone together on his watchtower across the multiverse and tells them what's going on, they come up with the idea to create the multiverse towers, which is something based from the original Crisis comics. They basically use them as tuning forks to cause the planets to go out of phase so the Crisis wave passes through them, but it's only three of the planets. But one of the biggest changes during this first part of the movie is they don't reveal the Anti-Monitor. If you ever saw the DC TV version of Crisis on Infinite Earths, they also changed a lot from the original Crisis in the comics, but you end up learning about the presence of the Anti-Monitor and the fact that he was behind everything much sooner. This time in the movie, you have this version of the Monitor and this version of Batman played by Jensen Ackles questioning whether or not the crisis waves are a natural phenomenon or if there's some sentient force behind them. They're basically teasing the Anti-Monitor. During the trailer for part two, you see all the shadow creatures. Those are minions of the Anti-Monitor in the comics, which is why I think they just haven't revealed him in the footage yet. Like that's a part two reveal. Then they spend all the third movie actually fighting him. 
There are a couple funny Easter eggs here too. The Earths that they wind up saving, the three here, are Earth 1, Earth 2, and Earth X. Earth 1 seems like it's meant to be the version of Earth from the Kingdom Come universe because this older version of Superman eventually gets married to a version of Wonder Woman, but he explains that it's after the death of his original Lois Lane. Earth X, you'll probably remember from the DC TV version of Crisis on Earth X. It was one of their big lead up crisis events, a big crossovers that they did in the years before they actually did Crisis on Infinite Earths. That was meant to be a version of Earth that was ruled by all the Nazi versions of the characters. There was a bit of a joke about that in the movie too, like, ah, working for Nazis didn't work out for you. They also explained that eventually in that universe, that version of Aquaman wound up melting the polar ice caps and Atlantis basically sunk the entire planet, taking over the planet itself. Like, how do you deal with all the Nazis? Why don't we just sink them all? But at the very end of the movie, after the Flash finishes constructing his sort of cosmic treadmill, I think that's what this is meant to be an Easter egg for when he's powering up all the tuning forks, the Spectre causes him to start time skipping again. The person that he sees here in the end in chains is supposed to be a version of Batman who's stuck in the past, which is why his eyes go wide when he recognizes the older Flash. Like, what? Who tells him he has to go back. And it's meant to be a universe where Batman went back in time and has to find a way to return to present day, which is kind of a deep cut for the final crisis event in the comics from a little while ago. That was when Darkseid's Omega Beams seemingly killed Batman when they really threw him back in time. It was meant to be the third major crisis event that DC did after the original one, then Infinite Crisis in the early 2000s. Then they basically ended this first movie teasing that in phasing all three worlds and helping them survive, they also altered the timelines of those worlds, causing the Tomorrowverse version of Brainiac 5 and the Legion of Superheroes from the future to never have existed. That's why they start disappearing at the end, but Supergirl does not, because Supergirl's from present day and she just traveled into the future to join the Legion of Superheroes. One of the big twists of this movie, though, is they actually revealed that this version, like the Tomorrowverse version of Harbinger, is actually Supergirl. At some point during the trailer here, it seems like she gets turned into Harbinger by the Monitor. Some sort of cosmic power-up, I'm sure, that will figure into the actual plot of Part 2. They don't really explain why that happened during Part 1. They just kind of tease that it did happen at some point. But there's a whole bunch of brand new footage here from part two where you see Batman Beyond, Terry McGinnis, he's back, Damian Wayne, Batgirl, Duke is in his Batman suit in the background here too. Like I said, the black shadow creatures are minions of the anti monitor So I think that part two will be all about them finding out that there is a conscious force behind the crisis wave and it is the anti monitor trying to actively destroy the multiverse. Basically, in the comics, the anti-monitor comes from the anti-matter universe and he wants to destroy the positive matter multiverse. That was one of the things that made me laugh about the whole crime syndicate in the movie is that they basically said they were going to punch the antimatter wave away. Like, how are you going to punch antimatter? But it seems like in the part two trailer, the crisis wave comes back. So it just seems like the anti-monitor restarts it and tries the same thing again. There's a little bit of footage here of Psycho Pirate using his powers. In the comics, he was eventually compelled to serve the anti monitor He kind of switched sides on all the heroes. Then because he was one of the survivors of Crisis at the end, he was doomed to remember it. That was sort of the penance that he served for betraying everyone. One of the other funny Easter eggs in the background too on the monitor's platform here is that you see a version of Peacemaker, which reminds me of my huge theory about Peacemaker Season 2 in the live action James Gunn DCU with all this reboot stuff he's doing. James Gunn also addressed this theory too, like people have been asking about it specifically. But the idea is that a lot of characters from the DCEU, which is where Peacemaker Season 1 comes from, will survive into the rebooted DCU movies. And in most cases, James Gunn said that they'll have a way of explaining how everything works in the DCU, but the characters themselves won't spend a lot of time referencing the DCEU. Like all the actors that come back as their characters in the new DCU movies won't walk around talking about the original version of the Justice League like Henry Cavill's Superman or Ben Affleck's Batman. But my early idea for what you could do, and you could just do this as a one-off joke, like you don't have to keep doing it over and over, but you have Peacemaker act as sort of like the psycho pirate of this new DCU because this whole thing is just spouting off crazy conspiracy theories. He went on and on about them during Peacemaker season one. Most of his theories were meant to be so crazy that nobody ever believed anything that he said so you could just have him be the psycho pirate of the new DCU where he's the only character that remembers that there was a previous version of the universe and there was a reboot that happened. Speaking of reboots, talking about that live action Batman Beyond movie, 
right before DC hired James Gunn to be their new version of Kevin Feige, they had a completely different 10-year plan for all these things the movies were building up to. It was going to be a live-action version of Crisis on Infinite Earths. It was going to involve Henry Cavill Superman, Ben Affleck's Batman, all the DCEU characters. There were a bunch of scenes in the Flash movie that they had to delete, like a bunch of deleted scenes that were meant to set this up. I did a much bigger video about that, so I'll link it at the end of this and down in the description below because it goes on for a while. But one of the big changes they were making during that 10-year plan is that Michael Keaton was going to become the main version of Batman for a while, and they would eventually be doing a live-action Batman Beyond movie with him in a new version of Terry McGinnis. There were a bunch of post credit scenes they shot, even for Aquaman 2 with Michael Keaton's Batman. They then reshot those with Ben Affleck's Batman because they changed the order that the movies all came out in. And then they eventually hired James Gunn and just completely wiped all those plans off the map. Like, off the books, nope, no, we're not going to do this. So hopefully at some point, like in the next 10 years, James Gunn will eventually have some kind of live-action Batman Beyond movie, but I'm not going to hold my breath for that anytime soon. Like, first he has to introduce this brand new DCU Batman in Batman Brave and the Bold, which will not be Robert Pattinson's Batman, then maybe after like another 10 years, then we can finally get live-action Batman Beyond. We'll probably get some footage from some of the upcoming live-action DC stuff in the next several months. They're going to be filming Superman Legacy soon, so maybe, if we're lucky, we'll get some footage from the set. James Gunn said that he was holding most of the official trailers for that until next year, though. Whatever kind of footage we wind up getting, of course I will do videos for it, so be sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss any of that. Click here to learn about all those deleted scenes, all the Superman stuff that they had to get rid of during the Flash movie, and click here for that brand new Venom 3 opening scene video and learn what Sony's plan is for their Spider-Man symbiote saga. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.